Hey, you guys, welcome to tonight's team call. Um, as promised, I'm doing team calls every, uh, or we have a team call every Thursday night. Um, when Melissa, your upline, hosts a team made team call, we are uh, going to jump in with her. And on the evenings, on the Thursdays, that she does not have a team call then I'm coming in and delivering a training or a teaching that I believe is, um, that either I believe uh, is pertinent to our team, like where we are individual, each of, each of the people on our team are individually or collectively, and, or, you know, from my personal one-on-one -on -one sessions that I have with you guys when we talk and you bring to me topics that you know that you want to areas of, of growth then i'm going to make sure that i bring to you um a teaching or a training not from not just from me and my experience but from the mentors in my life and the things that i've learned um along the way uh so a couple of a uh, couple of announcements real quick for because we are towards the end of April. The first thing is that I want to um, recognize, I uh, didn't recognize Caroline last month and I wanna make sure that I do recognize her now for um, uh, achieving the, some success point, club points last month. I'm super proud of her for, for that. And it's just evidence of you know people uh, watching your journey and following your journey and being inspired by you so i want uh if you when you see caroline online i want you to make sure when you watch this recording i want you to make sure that you reach out to her and congratulate her on that um i did post today our current uh standings for success club uh, and that's across all of team made so that means that if you've achieved numbers this month that your success club points will, your name with your success club points will be on the board. So um, make sure that if you see your team members that you shout them out. Um, I know it's a lot of names, but uh, if, you, if you know the members of your team, you will, you will definitely recognize their names on that list. And it's uh, even the people who are, be, uh, beyond our small little team here. Uh, hey, Kathy. Um, is, let me do, let me do this. Yeah. So, well, there you go. All right. So, um, I was just saying congratulations to um caroline and make sure that you see her because last month she had achieved some success club points put some points on the board that means that she reached that she helped um someone uh with shakeology or a challenge pack and so kudos to her and i was just saying that i posted um in our team page i posted the um big board from teammates you can see all your fellow coaches um, for everyone who has achieved uh, success, who is on their way to achieving success club so far for this month. So we're not done with the month. Um, and any uh, you, anyone that you see even beyond Life at Nation, like anyone you see in Team Made, um, that you recognize their names, everybody from, you know, Janice, Nicole, Lisa, Willingham, you know, when you see them, um, make sure that you tell them congratulations and cheer them on. So the other announcement that I wanted to make sure that I went over is that we, um, that everyone saw my, has been seeing my posts and they were able to re, um, listen to the national wake up call and the super weekend. Uh, and if not, make sure you visit your coach online office and the coach breaking news and you catch up on everything VOD groups. There is an actual training tutorial now not just the one that Kim Carver did in the Beachbody Champions page, but in your back office, 
there is a training guide, a PDF training guide. There's a couple of videos back there and a, a walkthrough tutorial for you that will be helpful. So you know what to expect come April 26th and make sure that you've checked your email because corporate sent out an email um, to let you know what it is that you need to do um, between now and Sunday and then what you'll need to do on Sunday. So as far as the group that we're currently running, we're going to, um, as soon as Sunday comes, at 8 a.m. Pacific time is whenever it goes live, the new bot groups, corporate-wide. So whenever it goes live, um, probably basically after our Turbo Kick and Pio class, I'll be um, jumping online to immediately help get our new bot groups set up because it will be completely take the place of the My Challenge Tracker app. Um, My Challenge Tracker app is going away and we're only gonna need the bot app um, because bot groups will be within the Beach Betting On Demand app. So anyway, exciting stuff. And if you want to um, be a part of helping to set up the bot group and get us going in our, for our May group, which I'll tell you, um, anybody who wants to help host. Um, thank you, Kathy, who's been consistently helping, but if anybody else wants to help host, then you just need to reach out to me. You need to private message me, you need to comment under this video, whatever, um, and make sure that you communicate that to me um, by this weekend, because we will be um, assigning, uh, rotating through who's gonna post what within the group, um, for May, and we're going to be looking at the full May challenge guide, which was released today. Okay. All right. So tonight, um, what, what I really wanted to be able to bring to you guys. And like I said, the, the topics that I'm going to be bringing whenever team, whenever Melissa is not hosting a teammate team call for, uh, I'm going to be hosting a life in nation team call on some topic that I feel like is pertinent to us or relative related to something that um, we've talked about in any of our personal one-on-one -on -one calls with each other and this one is um, a recurring thing that keeps uh, coming up and it also resonated with me because it was one of the things that i wanted for my life um, this year and it's funny that we're facing the the times that we're facing right now because it's been perfect for me having to go back through these steps and self-reflect and be self-aware and hold myself accountable to the um the life the that i wanted to you know that i wanted to create for myself this year you know every year we start off and we say okay i want to be intentional uh, or i have these dreams i have these ideas i want these things that i want to achieve and then we realize oh in order to make them happen I'm going to have to be very intentional about some things. I'm going to be have, have to be intentional about letting some things go. And I'm going to have to be intentional about um, it, uh, putting new, you know, in, uh, new things in or bringing new things in or activating new things in, in my life. And every, you know, every top, um, pretty much every top coach or any, not even every top coach, every successful coach, um, in Team Beach Body, or has if you were to ask them, you know, what was it that made a difference? You know, what was the first step that they can think of? When was the moment that they can remember um, really creating, having this moment of growth, or having this from that point on, like everything changed for them, and they were able to start creating the success in their business um, every and uh, and you know whether it was success or whether it was creating joy and 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 enjoying the journey of growing their own coaching business for uh, almost every single one of them they're gonna point you to a moment where they made a decision and they had to start getting intentional about the actions that they were taking and the decisions that they were making every single day. And then, um, uh, and I know I've mentioned it before, but um, the blessed, the best yes um, book by Lisa Turkers would be a fantastic uh, book to read or listen to. Um, I think it's on Audible, but I, um, I think that's how I listen to it. Um, and for helping you to identify those areas who that you know you need to to guard or 
um, create space for, right? So, um, but tonight I'm going to be diving into some principles by John Maxwell. And he uh, um, is someone who has made a, his whole life studying and also mentoring and being a student of um, success principles. Um, the things that help people to be successful. Um, and in particular, grow into being their own leaders, a leader of self. And um, that that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about being intentional, about wanting to create an intentional mindset and intentional um, and having in, an in, um, being intentional about how we live our life in order to create success. We're saying, I need, want to, uh, I need to grow myself into leading my own life in the direction that I want it to go, right? And in order to lead others, we need to also be able to lead ourselves. And in order to lead ourselves, it requires some discipline. And intentional living is, um, in our discipline is all self-discipline is required for intentional living. So I'm going to share my slides so we I can stay on point and we're going to go through all of these points and that way also it makes it easier for you to take notes. Okay. All right. Move this around for a moment. and get our little fun faces out of the way. All right, so tonight's topic is five steps to intentional living and this, you know, taking that taking the time to no longer just say that someday I'm going to get to something, but that today I'm going to take the actions necessary in order to make someday come to me. So let's talk about the difference between all that. Intentional thinking produces intentional living. Um, the right mindset is an intentional mindset. Um, when, when we're not in an intentional mindset, we're leaving a lot to chance. We're leaving a lot to, um, you know, just this idea or this kind of sense that we're waiting for something to kind of fall in our lap or something to happen for us, right? And so the right mindset is an intentional mindset. The, uh, um, if, if I wanna make steps in the right direction, then I'm gonna have to first identify the steps that are gonna need to be taken in order to get me to where I wanna be. And so the question to ask is, do you spend today, do, here's, a, here's a reflective question, do you spend today, mo, the majority of your todays, right? Do you spend the majority of your todays preparing for tomorrow? Or do you spend the majority of your day repairing from yesterday? In other words, do you spend the majority of your day um, in damage control or catching up from yesterday and the things that didn't happen because you weren't intentional and didn't follow through with what you said you were going to do. Kind of a, a reality check or a gut check, right? Um, one, of the, uh, the, one of the quotes from John Maxwell that I love is one of the greatest gaps in life is between sounding good and doing good. In other words, don't just tell me what you're going to do. Show me. Like stop talking about it and do it. Intentional living is the great dividing line between words and results. It's the difference between what I'm saying that I'm getting ready to do or that I want to do or what, that, what I wish would happen or what I hope will eventually happen for me and actually creating it for real. Um, would your life improve if you turned good intention into good action? That's, that's the question. And that's just something that we have to be honest with ourselves about. 
You know, is there room for improvement in our life? Everybody has room for improvement in their life. So the question is, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times we have um, moments where we go, okay, I really want this to happen in my life, or I really want to create this great thing, this new business idea, this, um, I want, you know, I want to help X amount of people this month. I want to help so many, you know, I would feel successful if I helped 20 people in a six month time frame. I would feel successful if I was hitting success club every month, which would mean that I was helping at least three people every month. I would feel successful um, and, and satisfied with, with my life um, or feel like I was achieving my goals or my dreams if I could um, uh, recruit just two people to join my team this month. That would be awesome. I would feel like I was living the dream. Like I was doing what I set out to do in order to get to the idea in my mind of where I want to be. And so the question is, you know, um, how much would I, uh, how much lot more likely would I be to get there if instead of just thinking about it, I, I, um, got intentional about the steps that I would need to take in order to get there. Would I see improvement in my day-to-day -day life so that I'm no longer living in, you know, catch-up mode, but now I'm actually living in creation mode. So intentional living starts with an intentional mindset. An intentional mindset is a series of five choices or five steps, according to John Maxwell. And tonight we're diving into each of these mindset choices to turn your dreaming into doing. So I want y'all to understand that these points or these steps are not coming from just me. They are principles from the man himself, the expert, the big guru, John Maxwell. And I'm just sharing with you in a way that we can apply to coaching. Are you ready? So number one, step number one, I choose. And remember, these are mindset. These are the, they're steps, but they're also choices. And he has coined these or framed these in that mindset of a choice. And so number one, the first step is I choose to be realistic. Real reality is the difference between what we wish for and what we have and the changes that we need to make to reach our desired destination. So if I'm be choosing to be realistic, um, you know, so like if I was to just um, walk into a mall, right? Um, because, and I, and I know that there's a Barnes and Noble in the mall and it's my goal to get a certain book that I know is at Barnes and Noble. But if I, and, and, you know, if I'm not realistic about it, okay, if I'm not realistically thinking about it, I would just show up and be standing there and waiting for the book to appear in my hands, right? But realistic speaking says, I need to go into that mall and then I need to find on the map where the book where the books and noble store is compared to where i'm standing right now so that i know the directions and the steps and the path that i need to take in order to get to the barnes and noble the store where i'm going to find the thing that i want the book and then the book um i have to go through the process of actually purchasing the book and making it mine right so realistic realistic thinking or me choosing to be realistic just takes me out of a mindset of hoping for something to happen for me uh, and, and or to me and choosing to be part of the solution, choosing to look at where I'm actually, where I am and where I need to be and the steps that I need to take in order to be there. So here are the questions that we need to ask. So take a moment and answer these questions for yourself. Where, and, and when these questions that you're answering for yourself, you are, in, in particular, you're looking at, okay, I signed up as a coach. 
where and when I signed up as a coach, there were certain um, there were certain reasons why I did that. Maybe I've lost sight of them. Maybe I don't quite remember what they were, but that's where we're, we're focusing our mind right now. Whenever I'm asking you these questions, okay, where are you when it comes to your coaching? Now I'm not just talking about like success club numbers. I, you know, I'm talking about where are you with helping people right now? Where are you with reaching people in order to help them because that's where your success is going to come from that's where your sense of accomplishment is going to come from and that is the we are in a people focused business we coaching is people focused and if we don't have people then we're not helping and we're not in our purpose so where are you where are you just take an honest honest assessment and write down some answers where are you with it right now where do you want to be that's the next question so where am i right now with my coaching business and then where do i want to be with my coaching and it's okay to answer income wise too whatever your focus is right now remember this has to be personal to you you know and then the next question is, what changes do I need to make to get to where I want to be, to see the things that I want to see in my coaching business? This is realistic thinking. A lot of times real, people think realistic thinking is has more to do with being um, coming from a negative place. And I don't believe that. Realistic thinking is not being negative by default. It's not. It's actually, I believe, lining up our thoughts and asking the questions necessary in order to line up those thoughts with God, the vision that God has given us for what our purpose is and what he has given us um, a desire to achieve. All desires of the heart, God's given to us, that's scripturally based. So if I have that idea, if I have that desire in my heart, if I get a little bit excited or even a little bit nervous or and kind of, you know, almost a little scared, but like I, I know I want to do it, even though it's kind of scary to think about achieving it, if I know that it's something that I want or that I would feel really cool or really good about achieving, that's a God idea. If it's a God idea, that must mean that it's tied to my purpose and that I'm going to have a, a sense of a more fulfilled life if I actually accomplish it, right? So looking at that, these are the three questions. Where am I with it? Where do I want to be with it? And what changes do I need to make in order to get there? So here are three benefits to realistic thinking, right? Number one, realistic thinking is a catalyst for change. It's the, it's the change agent. It is the preemptive. It is the thing that comes um, that spurs on the change to happen. If I'm not being realistic with my thinking and I'm just hoping, hoping is a great state of mind, but it's not enough by itself to propel us into action. I can be very hopeful. I can be like, man, I really hope that this works out but just hoping by itself that doesn't get me to that doesn't propel me into action that doesn't make me go ooh, let me do something about it like i'm gonna do this right now right so just hoping means that we are waiting for someone or something to happen to make us to make our success happen not to make us make it happen but to we just kind of hope Something's going to, oh, this one thing is going to happen. This one thing is going to is, is going to come into my life and, and it's just going to happen for me. Therefore, if we live in that place where we're just hoping something's going to happen for us, we're not ever going to hold ourselves responsible for the necessary changes or actions that we need to make in our everyday life. The reality is, is that anything that we want to happen 
there's going to have to be a subsequent action. There's going to have to be an action that is going to make it happen, that some kind of decision. It's either a decision, you know, an action doesn't mean doing more. An action might be the decision to do less in a certain area in order to make something that we know that needs to happen, happen. Maybe it's because, maybe it's a certain area that we need more time, right? Maybe it's something we go, okay, I need more time to, to make this happen. So that means that I need to look at my calendar and I need to get realistic about scheduling the time to do those things as if it, and then actually like keeping the appointment with myself, right? And I struggle with this with, you know, th this is something that I've had, you know, if I, especially working from home, if I'm just sitting here and somebody, um, and you know, my, my, maybe my kids or my husband, if I haven't communicated with them and said, I am going to be in my office, I am going to be working on X, Y, on this project. I'm going to be working on creating some posts. I'm going to be working on, um, I'm going to be listening in on a team call. I'm going to be whatever it is that whatever business activity it is that I am, um, needing to sit down at my computer for, if I haven't communicated that with my family then that time has not been guarded. If I didn't actually write it down on my calendar, that time has not been created. And it's not real until it lives on the calendar. Until it makes it to your schedule and your daily agenda on your calendar, it's not real. It's a hope and it's a wish, and, but it's not concrete. There's still that chance that it's not going to happen and you're leaving it up to chance that it will happen. But when you carve out the time and you put it as a priority on your calendar, it happens. You show up for it and you communicate to your family and then they honor it. So just hoping that means that um, means that we are waiting for someone or something. I already read that realistic thinking and then plus intentional action is what re equals results. In other words, your success with anything, whether it's fitness or business or anything else in life. Number two, here's your second benefit to realistic thinking. Realistic thinking gives you credibility. Has, here's a question for you. Has there been a gap between what you've said you're about, what you've said you want, or what you're going to do, and then what you're taking action, what you're actually taking action towards? Let that, let that sink in a minute and then and ask yourself this question. This is a self-reflection question, but what happens is, um, you know, I can I can say some really great, inspiring things, but if I don't, you know, like people will be like, "Oh, that's a great idea. You should, you know, oh, I can't wait to see you do that." And even if they don't respond, like let's say I put it out there in a post and I say, "I'm going to start this program." Um, it's in like I'm about to start 80 day obsession, right? If I was to put it out there and say, "I'm going to start an 80 day," workout program and it's um leg focused and um or and there's weights and there's all these components but it's 80 days and i'm committing to this 80 day program and the reason why i'm committing to this is because i believe in you know glute strength hip strength it's all important and um, i have these goals for myself and i want to achieve these goals and this program is designed to help me reach those particular goals so i'm going to commit myself to this 80-day program i'm going to show up every day i'm going to do my workout you want to follow along with me you can watch my stories you want to join in with it you can join me in my fit club come be a part of my challenge group and um, this is what i'm going to do and then but, it, you know, and I can say all those great things and people can get inspired by it and they'll be like, wow, she, you know, she, she, Angel's about to do that thing. But then if I don't actually back it up and do the things that I'm saying, I'm mean, if I don't actually show up and do my workouts every day to where people can see me doing them. And if I don't actually show that, um, that by doing, my cat is crawling all over my keyboard. If I, if I don't actually show um, that show up in my, in my challenge tracker app or soon to be bog group app. If I don't, in, if I'm not showing up every day and showing that these programs actually work and they create the consistency and the results that I'm telling other people it creates and 
that that's the reason why I'm committed to it, then my I'm going to start losing credibility with them. I'm going to start losing trust with them. I'm going to lose reputation. I'm going to ha not have a reputation. Um, my reputation is actually going to be one of inconsistency. And when people don't see me be consistent, they what they actually start to think is what network marketers are actually the slimy network marketers are 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 um, known for, unfortunately, and that is they start to see you as possibly just wanting to get a sale. But when I'm actually showing them that I'm about the lifestyle, so I know a couple of you are um, a few of you on my team, right? We're instructors, and we want to be able to promote our classes. And if that is your main focus then promote that but also show the consistency how show the benefits of how being a coach and showing up to a challenge group every day and supplementing with shakeology or your recover and your energize and the you know the things that you get from those make sure you're highlighting those as well otherwise what you're selling doesn't isn't valuable to anybody whenever you mention it right so uh when i'm realistic in my thinking i'm not allowed to say it it removes the it removes the tendency or it removes the um possibility of me being able to just say i'm going to do something and not actually do it number three realistic thinking brings your dream into reality it forces us to face our challenges and problem solve for the future we want to create. Okay, so just like if I was to get ready to, if I'm saying, okay, I really want to create this um, habit of making, of getting my workout done every morning at 7 a.m., whatever it is. Okay, I'm just going, going with an example here. Well, okay, so I, a realistic approach to that, realistic thinking would say, okay, what time am I currently getting to bed? What time do I need to get to bed? What do I need to do in order to make that make myself get in bed so that I'll get up at the appropriate time? It also makes us look at the things that are keeping me from being able to do the things that I say I want to do. The same thing goes to your business, right? So if I say that I really want to get that i really want to attract people into my challenge groups i want to help people get connected with shakeology because i believe in shakeology i want to help people get connected to these nutrition programs to the um ultimate portion fix or the 2b mindset because they've made a change in my in my life um i believe in 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 the efficacy of these programs um i want to reach people to help them well then what are the steps the realistic thinking says let what do i need to do in order to reach people and then i it, it i mean it forces me to face the challenge before me of how i'm going to reach people i'm currently not reaching them how am i going to make that happen okay and then have to problem solve for for the steps that you know the things that are keeping me from reaching people now maybe it is a time issue maybe it's a confidence issue maybe it's a self-doubt issue right maybe it's um the uh the the discipline to respond to messages maybe you're really good at sending messages but then you avoid responding like the plague right or maybe it's just that you don't set the time aside to actually connect with people Maybe you're scared to death of connecting with people. Those are all problems that need to be solved. And realistic thinking says, I'm going to, I'm going to, it makes me face them head on and um, do something about it. So one of the quotes that Josh Coates has said before that really stuck with me is he'd say, you know, many, a lot of times I hear, um, he's he's saying coaches network marketers but he's he's saying you know a lot of times i hear coaches say you know i 
I really, they, they look at a top coach like Melanie Mitro or Katie Ersta or whatever, or Melissa McAllister. And they say, wow, you know, look at all that stuff that she's achieved. I would really love to have her kind of success. Right. But what he says, what I rarely hear them say is, wow, I'd really like to have the work ethic of Melissa McAllister. I really like to have the schedule, the self-discipline of sending out invites and creating uh, the, the marketing strategies on the back end of Mel Mel that Melon Metro has, right? So in other words, the work, the actual doing that they do in order to create the success that we see with our eyes. So success takes time, energy, and the compound effect, those things adding up over time and compounding, compounding, compounding to actually create the results that we want. And, and the ability, not the willingness to fail many times, to fail forward, because we're never going to be perfect. And a lot of times we're going to have to do it messy. But doing without it being perfect is better than not doing it at all, waiting for perfection first. So in our step, that was a very long step number one. I promise it gets shorter after this. So step number two to uh, creating the intentional mindset or intentional living is I choose to be coachable. It's impossible. It's impossible to maximize any area of life without having a good coach or a good mentor and actually listening to them. Without positioning ourselves to be coached and be taught and be mentored. So being teachable or being coachable is an attitude. It's an attitude for growth. It's a, uh, but based in humility. It's, it's when we say, okay, I don't know it all. I don't, I don't know um, what I need to do to get to where I want to be. So I'm going to tune in and listen to the people who have already gone to where I want to be. Now, I obviously have not achieved the same success as Melissa McAllister, but I don't need to achieve to have the same. Okay. So like, I don't. I don't need to have the exact same success of Melissa McAllister in order to coach or mentor others. So I'm kind of flipping the script on you for a minute because I know you're probably thinking, well, how can I coach other people? This is something I see a lot. Um, how can I coach other people? Who is going to want to listen to me? Who's going to want to sign up for my challenge groups? Who's going to want to sign up for my team? Who's going to want to become a coach with me um, in order for me to ever achieve the emerald rank or ruby or diamond or one star diamond? Who's ever going to listen to me? Um, because I'm not a I haven't established myself as a great coach or mentor or whatever. And that's baloney. The thing, the fact of the matter is you don't have to be a Melissa McAllister um, or be at the level of Melanie Mitro or Ashley Molstead or any of the other top 10 coaches. You don't have to achieve that level of success in order to be an effective coach or mentor to another person. You just need to be one or two steps ahead. That's it. And guess what? You already are. So in that sense, you know, flip it back around and, and realize that in the same way that you make yourself available to be taught, whether it's by me or another coach on team made, and you're paying attention to what they're doing to create success. Um, you know, what was it And the simple things? It's not the big things. It's the simple things that they're saying, Hey, you want to be an Emerald coach. This is what you need to do. You want to make $200 a week. This is what you need to do. And then being in a position to, to be honest with yourself and say, to look at what they're laying out and say, okay, am I actually doing those things? No. Okay. What do I need to change and be willing to actually do it? It's more of an attitude and a mindset than anything. So ask yourself these three questions. Or, uh, or these questions, not three, these, there's six of them actually. Number one, do I have the desire to continually improve? 
This is deter this is to determine how teachable you are. How willing are you to be taught something or how coachable you are? A little bit of an attitude check. Do I have the desire to continually improve? Do I realize that I need the help of others? Do I want to be coached by others? Am I willing to make the, ne un the necessary changes to improve? Do I easily give credit to those who help me? And do I desire feedback and make appropriate changes from it? Because being coachable requires a commitment to grow and letting someone else speak into your life. That was something I learned from my spiritual mama years ago. I have to give somebody permission to call me out and to and not just call me out, but speak positivity, speak growth, speak life into me. You know, the life that they see in me the potential they see in me let them speak to that number three step number three i choose to be positive so when john maxwell talks about his book the difference maker he has a book called the difference maker and in the thesis of that book he says attitude isn't everything but it is the one thing that can make a difference in your life. So often he says, I'm asked to identify the single most important aspect of a positive attitude. And my answer is possessing a whatever it takes attitude, a whatever it takes mindset. A whatever it takes mindset is simply a positive attitude with some muscle in it, he says. So here are the, step, the four parts of your mindset workout if you were to think of creating muscle in your mindset here are the four steps to it he says number one disarm helplessness disarm your helplessness when you when you have the uh, the attitude of there's nothing i can do about it then you're not in a position where you're going to be willing to pursue solutions that's more of a victim mentality. And we want to get away from that mindset of, I'm just stuck where I'm at. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to develop the strength or the muscle in my attitude that there's always an answer to a problem and that I'm willing to be a part of that answer. Number two, answer the hard questions. So those questions that we asked at the beginning of, you know, like, Okay, what do I really want? And why do I want this? And am I, you know, what is it going to cost me to get it? Whether it's time or energy or money or whatever. And then am I willing to pay the price? You know, we ask people when they sign up for challenge groups all the time, we say, okay, what are your goals that you want for yourself right now? Like, do you want to lose 50 pounds? Do you want to gain lean muscle? Do you want to get toned? Um, do you want to get off medication? What, what is it that you really want? why do you want it why is it important to you to actually achieve those things and and then we and then they always ask us the question they say okay but how much is it going to cost and then they have to make that decision okay am i willing to pay that and if we've done our job of painting the value of Shakeology, of painting the value of Beach of Beachbody on Demand, of painting the value of the community that we have and the accountability that we provide and the service that we provide to them as a coach through their fitness journey, then they're gonna see and recognize the value of that and they're gonna know, hey, you know what? It is worth $160. You know, when I was looking at Shakeology, I was like, oh my God, how can anything be worth $130 a month, right? And even with a coach discount, how can it be worth $97 when I can just go get a protein shake off the, off the shelf for 25 or 30? And, but I had to understand the value of it. I had to look at the ingredients. I had to educate myself a little bit. So the same is true with our business. The same is true for the dreams and the goals and the, the, and the things that we want from, uh, from our coaching business. 
You know, I know I ask this all the time. You can say, oh yeah, an extra $200 a week, an extra $500 a week, an extra $1,500 a month. That would be awesome if I could create that in my coaching business. Okay. But, and, and that, but if I just keep saying $1,500 or $500 or $200, that number doesn't mean anything really until I ask myself to visualize what that would actually create in my life. What would I be spending that $200 on or what kind of, or, or $1,500 on what kind of peace of mind would that be creating in my life? What is that worth to me? And then say, okay, am I willing to spend the time, the energy? Am I willing to stay up an extra 45 minutes? Am I willing to do a team call instead of, you know, laying in bed with my husband, <laughs> you know? And if the, uh, and then whenever I keep the vision in my mind of what it is that I'm looking forward to creating, the answer is always going to be yes. It's worth it. So the other final question is, am I willing to pay the price now instead of continuing to put it off to the someday? Because that's hope deferred. And the Bible says that hope, hope deferred makes the heart sick. That's when we're always living in that place of discouragement and resentment and bitterness and self-frustration. But when we take action, when we get intentional with the life that we want to lead, that's when we cross over into the, into abundant life, a, a living abundantly, the abundance mindset instead of a victim and scarcity mindset. So in number three, Enter the uh, no whining zone. This is the other part of choosing to be positive. I'm going to enter a no whine zone. Whatever it takes, people know how to handle their feelings. They put their attitude in charge of their emotions. My emotions are not in charge of me and my thoughts and my attitude. My attitude is in charge of my emotions. If, my, if I have the wrong emotion show up, my attitude, my mindset is going to put it in its place and tell it to change. We all experience times when we feel bad, but our attitude needs to be able to keep our feelings from stopping us in our tracks, from letting our emotions get the best of us and hold us back from our true purpose and potential. Whiners want to feel good before they do something. Winners do something so they can feel good. That's another John Maxwell quote. So you can't moan and succeed at the same time, period. The next point of I choose to be positive is never be complacent. The final attitude characteristic of whatever it takes people is positive discontent, meaning so I'm not going to be just sad. At, oh, I'm not going to give myself the, the way out or the excuse of saying, well, it's OK if it doesn't happen. I'm OK. I don't really need to help five people. Man, what would it actually mean? What would it actually feel like to those people? If you were to look at them, think of your challenger, think of your customers right now, think of the five, or actually no, think about like two people right now that you know would benefit from turning their health and fitness around. And then imagine looking at them and saying, eh, it's not really that important to help you. That's harsh. That's hard to imagine doing that, right? They are important. And so therefore our dream is important. Our desire to help them is important. So not be complacent. So Number four, the step number four, I choose to be persistent. Everything worthwhile is uphill all the way, all the way. Persistence is, a no, is like a requirement. When, you know, whenever I signed up as a coach, there used to be a saying, when I signed up as a coach, this big saying back then, one of, my, one of our upline coaches said, be here in one year. I think Melissa said it actually. I think Melissa said, uh, challenged us. She said, be here in one year. I think Danielle and Tony says it too. And Christine Dwyer and Melanie Mitchell, like all the big top coaches, because they're, that was a big theme for a while. They were like, 
you know what, be here in a year. And then after that, they came back and they said, screw that. Don't just be here in one year, be here in two, be here in three, be here in however long it takes. Because you know what, if we can be persistent through a four year degree, we can be persistent in, in one, two, four years it takes to grow a business. If we truly believe in the purpose in our purpose and the, pur and the um, purpose behind it, the good that would come out of it. And so anytime we're talking about growing a business, we're going to have to be persistent and we're going to have to know our commitment. That, that stance of knowing that no matter what it takes, I'm going to follow through, no matter how hard it gets, no matter who rejects me, I'm going to stay committed and I'm going to stay persistent. So the path of persistence is the path that people ultimately, the people who ultimately succeed have always followed. Everybody experiences difficult times. Everybody experiences failure at some point. Everybody experiences criticism and rejection. Everybody at some point has somebody mean say something to them. Everybody at some point had, you know, has a discouraging frame. You know, one time I had, I had a friend um, and I love her, but you know, I had a friend who uh, was discouraging to me, you know, um, not just, not, a, not against coaching, but it was about um, the pictures that I was putting of myself. <laughs> I can't believe this is the first memory that's popping up as an example to you guys. But, um, you know, this was a time where uh, I was starting to get a little bit more confident or just a little bit more comfortable, I guess. I was scared, but I was putting myself out there for the first time of like putting more pictures of myself on social media. And Facebook was a thing. Instagram wasn't even invented yet. And it was like big and scary for me to do that. And I had a friend actually talk to me face to face um, and tell me that I needed to uh, not do any more pictures with like that my that I would do better with my pictures if I didn't have my hair pulled up because then all that um, because um, it was making her notice my big forehead. <laughs> I'm serious. And I know where she was coming from. She was trying because she knew that I was sensitive about my forehead. And she was, I think in her mind, she was thinking that she was helping me um, to avoid being insecure about my forehead by, you know, how I was wearing my hair. But in actuality, it just made me even more insecure. It made me second guess every time I was going to take a picture about putting it up if people were just thinking of my big forehead. <laughs> I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say out loud, but it the smallest thing when you let those when you let criticism and um, someone not being on board with what you're doing, or when you actually try to do something and then you fail at it the first time, or when something hard happens in life and you let those things hold you back then it makes it that much harder to keep going. You can't, and, and to actually, you know, you're even less likely to reach the place that you say that you wanna go. And then number five, step number five, I choose to believe in myself and my purpose. I've kind of leaked it several times throughout tonight's call, but I choose to believe in myself and my purpose. Behavior follows belief. Behavior follows belief. So if I, if I take the time to build up a strong belief in myself and in my purpose, then of why, you know, and, and like the why behind what I want to do with my coaching. Maybe you don't have a dream of building a team of 20, 50, 100 people. Maybe you don't have a dream of having, you know, 20 customers. Maybe you just have a dream. You just want to help two people. You just want to have the sense of reward of making a difference in one person's life. 
it it doesn't matter how big or small it sounds like it's how big it feels to you and what how you know what you feel god's put you on this earth for you know who is it that he has put on your heart to re to make a difference in who is it that maybe you don't maybe he's just he's bringing someone to your mind right now someone that or a group of people even or people in your family you know or the idea maybe it's not this particular person maybe that's the idea for me you know i think a lot of times whenever i don't feel like posting or don't feel like showing up on social media i think about the per who the person that i used to be the person that used to hide in bed in sweat in sweats or my pajamas all day stay under the covers with some snacks you know watching tv or watching my computer until 2 30 hit and i had to leave to go pick up my kids and i was the closet emotional eater i was the person feeling like i didn't have a purpose or that god couldn't use me anymore or that I was a burden to my husband and not a great mom. You know, I think about that person who is maybe living in the reality that I used to live in. And then I have to believe that there's a purpose to the pain that I went through and the, and, and the, the steps that I took to overcome that God can help that, that, that woman, that person, he can make it so that she happens to be on Facebook and happens to come across my page, right? And that maybe, just maybe something I posted that day made her click follow and started to show up to follow me every day after that. And she started to recognize parts of herself in my story that makes her have the desire to change that makes her want to reach out to me, that makes her want this, that same change that I created in my life, in her own life. And it's happened over and over and over again. Not every single person has become a customer, but it's amazing to me how many times I, when I have chosen to believe in myself and in my that 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 dream and that desire and that purpose that god's put on my heart long enough to just do the dang thing and make the dang post that somebody comes out the woodwork and 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 comments or private messages me or three months later tells me that they remember this one post that i made and how it spoke to them and it made them cry or made them break down or made them start something new in their life and in that moment is whenever i praise god in that moment is whenever i i, I remember the fear that i faced and or the laziness that i was you know staring down that day before actually making the post and it and i add it to my pages of um notes <laughs> to self the next time that i don't feel like showing up the next time I don't feel like making a post, the next time I don't think I have the time to put my thoughts together to speak to that old me of who I was. And I remind myself of those people who my, who my, my words have reached before. And it makes me, it propels me into the action to posting again. You know, anytime that I have um been real honest about the behaviors that i know need to happen on my end the things that i know i need to do nine times out of ten the thing keeping me from actually doing them not just a self-discipline or a self-will exercise it's usually a self-belief it's not a time limitation usually. It's not usually a lack of self-discipline and self-will or of time. It's a lack of self-belief or it's a lack of self-purpose. But 
I loved what um, John Maxwell said. He said, your dream is about where you want to go and your purpose is about why you want to go there. So when you find your why, you will find your way. When you know why you want to get somewhere, that's when you're going to actually find the way to get there because it's going to become a non-negotiable. So let's do a quick exercise using a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, rank the following. What's my personal belief rating? How much do I believe in myself? Scale of one to 10. How much do I actually believe in myself? You know, I was saying that usually it's not a lack of time or a lack of skill or a lack of self-discipline. It's a lack of belief. In other words, there's a fear. Or some kind of fear that I'm facing down. And usually the fear is speaking to something I don't believe that I'm good enough to achieve. I don't believe I'm good enough to actually accomplish it. So what is that scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, where do I feel I am in my self-belief? my belief of actually being able to do be successful at being coach or of achieving success in my coaching or of building a team of successful coaches or of teaching others how to be a coach and then number two rate my personal i mean my purpose belief rate my purpose belief So not just my belief in myself, but my belief in my why. How much do I really believe that that is what God wants me to do? And if there's doubt there, then be honest and let it reflect in the number. Because what John Maxwell says is, he says, if you want to succeed, if you really want to succeed, your personal belief number needs to be at least a seven. And your purpose belief number needs to be a seven or higher. All too often, a person will have a personal belief number that is low and a purpose belief number that is high. For me, that's where, that's for sure where I started. <laughs> Absolutely. The day that I broke down crying um on a team call was the day that somebody was saying my fears out loud and i was coming face to face with the reality that my personal belief meter was way way low but my purpose i believe that i had the that i had a purpose to reach people and actually help people to empower them and equip them with the right resources and tools to get them to where they wanted to be to help them see the same success in their health and fitness that I had achieved, I wanted that for them. I believe that that was my purpose. But I was allowing my fears, my lack of belief in self to hold me back from actually doing it, from actually achieving that, from actually helping people. And that felt really bad. So either way, know this, for you to succeed, your personal belief and your purpose belief must both be high. And here's why. If you have a low personal belief and a low purpose belief, okay, so you get that? I don't, I, I have a lot of self doubt. I don't have any self confidence. And I also don't really know that I believe that I'm supposed to be doing this. Then I'll never really get started on it. If I'm still questioning whether or not I think I could actually pull it off, and I'm also questioning, not really sure why I'm doing this, then I'm never actually gonna get started. I'm never actually really gonna get anything off the ground. I'm not ever actually really gonna do the things. If I have a high personal belief, like I, like I really believe that I could do it if I put my mind to it, if I just did it, I know I could do it, right? I once had Melissa, 
I was in a coaching, a one-on-one coaching session with Melissa and she was mentoring me a little bit. And she was, she was said, she asked me the question. She, you know, cause we were looking at things in my business and where I was struggling. And she, she asked me the question. She said, Angel, she said, okay, if I was to come, if you had 50 pounds to lose and you wanted to lose 50 pounds and I came to you and said, okay, in order to lose 50 pounds, you need to do one, two, three. Do you believe that you could do it? If I laid out the steps for you, do you believe that you could do it? And I was like, well, yeah, I could do it. So my hot, my personal belief was really high, right? So we see that in our clients all the time. Well, we actually, we tell we see the opposite. A lot of times we see the low personal belief. They don't know if they really can, can do it, but sometimes, but same thing in our coaching business, you know, I can say, I can be like, yeah, I, I, I believe I could be successful. If I just knew what I needed to do, I could. But then if we have a low purpose belief along with that, like I still don't, I'm not quite sure that I am supposed to, or like, I don't really know why. I haven't really identified and envisioned the life that I want coaching to help me create for myself, either income wise or um, growing a team wise or, you know, whatever, if I'm not really secure on or secure in my why, then I won't have the, you know, when things get tough, I'm not going to continue. I'm not going to stay in it. I'm not going to stay persistent. I'm not going to stay committed. And the same thing happens with our challengers. They can come in gung ho, you know, they'll look at the program and they'll be like, Oh yeah, I can do this six weeks. No problem. I'm going to do six weeks. But then on week three, you know, after three weeks of doing all really great on week three, some kind of big life bomb happened. And then they go and they question, uh, or, you know, they're, they realize, Oh my God, I'm sore. Like every other day, this is really, really hard. Um, this, you know, uh, my family wanted to go out and eat cheesy enchiladas and it's just really hard to say no to that and have a salad or shrimp tacos on corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas with extra cheese. Like that's really hard. It's getting really hard. The journey is getting really hard. And so then I start to question if my purpose, if the why, if my why for doing it is not like an emotional one for me. If I haven't connected why I signed up to be a coach or why I want to lose 50 pounds to a very, a very emotional thing, like what what kind of life, like what is it getting me out of debt? Maybe that's the big emotional thing. Is it creating a little bit more cushion or freedom? Is it paying for a vacation that I can bring my kids on? What is it? Is it getting off the dang medication? Is it not being scared of developing diabetes? Whatever, whatever the why is, it needs to be deep seated. But if I don't have that in place, it doesn't matter how much I believe in my ability to do it. If I'm not sure and emotionally connected to the why, then I'm not going to continue when things get hard. I need something hot to to get me through that's bigger it's part of the bigger picture in a deep-seated why to get me through and then my low when my low personal belief so like I don't really believe in myself I lack self-confidence is combined with a high purpose belief that was my issue right I really believe I wasn't sure that I could do it but I knew I was getting that, you know, I was supposed to be doing it. That like God wanted me to do that. Like there was a purpose to me being here at this time to help these people. Then I won't ever, the problem with that is I won't ever really realize my dream because my lack of self-worth, my lack of self-belief is always going to hold me back from achieving it and forever really reaching for it. But if I can grow my self-worth up and I can grow my purpose, my why, and get them both functioning at a seven or higher level, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna accomplish the things that I've set out for myself to achieve. So if, those, if any of your numbers are low, 
you just need to take the time to think about why. Why are they low? And rev and then, you know, get your hands on the personal growth, the personal development books that help to grow in those areas. So if my numbers are low in self-belief and self-worth, I need to be pumping myself up with some personal development that speaks to self-confidence and self-worth. If my purpose belief number is way low, I need to get my hands on the books, the podcasts, the mentors, the teachings, the personal growth books and audibles that are going to help me grow in the purpose department. So ultimately, the whole thing with all five steps, if we're looking at all five steps together, I choose to be realistic. I choose to be coachable. I choose to be positive. I choose to be persistent. I choose to believe in myself and my purpose. It's the positive and the correct intentional mindset that is always going to amplify or add value to my life, not take away. So it's, you know, it's real tempting to sit in on a teaching like this and listen to all the words coming out of my mouth and hear those five steps. But if you receive it uh, and, and kind of like allow the mind to go into a negative place. And if we allow ourselves to go into a negative place and from a negative mindset, just see it as, oh, I need to be realistic. Oh, I need to be, like we just, we, it's, it can be real easy to look at those five steps and let our minds immediately go to the negative side of it being a chore, of it taking away. But in truth, all five of those steps are meant to amplify and add value to my life. So how did you do? That's the question, how did you do? The better your mindset, the more likely you are to actually follow through with all five, take it, take the honest inventory and actually take the five steps. And it is a daily thing. I think it's wonderful. I think it's awesome that John Maxwell put it in the place where in the words of choosing, he didn't make it like, as just a doing, you know, like he, he called them five steps, but then he made them to a choosing because I think it's brilliant because we can wake up every single day and choose all five. So the final three questions that I have for you and then I'm gonna close out. Number one, what is the most important takeaway of those, of those five steps or those five choosings, right? Which one do I need to apply to my life the most right now? Out of all five. And I'm gonna back up so you can see the five on, um, Actually, I didn't list all five for you. So out of being realistic, being coachable, being positive, or being persistent, or believing in myself and my purpose, which one do I need to apply to myself right now the most? The next question is, what's the most important thing I need to change in my life? as it concerns those five. And then the final thing is, what's the one most important step that I can take from these five steps? And which one do I need to be teaching, or coaching others in, right? Which one, and, and I want you to think, okay, well, I, I don't want you to think, oh, well, I don't have anybody on my team, so I don't have anybody to teach. No, maybe it's someone in your family that right now, you need to teach. Maybe it's also a principle that you need to take to your social media. When you're posting to your Facebook page, when you're posting to your Instagram, when you're posting to your stories, when you know when you're meeting people for Bible study, when you're when you're going into a community setting where you're going to be talking to people that could potentially 
join you in your challenge group or join your team, which one of these is your, is your message that you can be posting to help somebody, that old you that you recognize, the, the old mindset that you used to live in that you now know that you are in a new place, right? So when you're looking at like your health and fitness journey and you're recognizing in conversations with other people that they're living in that same old mindset that you used to, and you're, you're thinking to yourself like, man, if they could just understand like this one thing that I learned, I, how, do I, how am I going to teach it to them? That's the purpose of your social media, you guys. That's the purpose of your Facebook page. The things that you learn, learn them out loud, speak them in a post, in a video, in the words that you type out. Put it with a pretty picture so that people learn from you and you are given, you're, it's, it's a platform for you to communicate to them the things that you've learned and the, and, the, and the steps that you've taken to get to the mindset that you live in now or the mindset that you had to get to in order to make the changes happen in your life. The way that you help coach them before they're ready to be coachable is to put it in front of their face on your social media. So by you being more intentional with your coaching, with your life, with your business acti action activities, with your success club tracker, your business tracker every single day, by you being more intentional with your life, you're going to be helping the people following you and looking to you for answers and solutions for the health and fitness. You're going to be helping them be more intentional about actually creating the life they want to. Does that make sense? All right. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to end this and I'm going to stop the recording.